uh, we shall continue our discussions on discrete Fourier transforms, how to make use of it in the computation of some very complex sequences. Say last time we have seen in one go, you can find out the discrete Fourier transform of two sequences of n point length. Now, today we will take up a sequence of two n points with the help of n point DFTs. Okay. This will reduce our burden. We will see later on how the burden can be reduced by reducing the size of the sequence length. Now, if you have a sequence say V n of two n points, I break it up into two sequences. All right. I break it up into two sequences. One is pick up the even numbers, the other one is pick up the odd numbers. All right. So, it will be sequence two sequences of length n. So, let us define a sequence g n which will be v 2 n. Okay. So, 0 n n minus 1 okay. and h n another sequence h n v 2 n plus 1. Okay. So, 0 n n minus 1. So, what will be v k equal to v k is v n w 2 n n k is it not 2 n point d f t. So, I will multiply it by w 2 n n k small n varying from 0 to 2 n minus 1. This can be broken up into if I segregate the even and odd parts w 2 n 2 n k n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 plus correct me if I am wrong v 2 n plus 1 w 2 n 2 n plus 1 into k. Is that all right? And this itself we are defining as g n and h n. So, I might as well write this as summation over n g n. Now, 2 n and 2 n k, 2 will get cancelled. It is like this. Suppose, I have this entire circle of say 2 pi angle divided into 6 parts. So, w 6 will be the elemental angular shift of 60 degrees 360 divided by 6, 6 divisions. All right. Now, if I take 3 out of 6, it is as good as 1 out of 2, it is like this. So, w 6 3 is sorry 6 3 is same as w 2 1 is same as w 4 2 means 2 out of 4 is same as that. So, this can be written as w n n k plus similarly this one what will be this one h n w 2 n w 2 n this is 2 n plus 1 into k 2 n plus 1 into k I can always write as 2 n k into w 2 n k I can separate it and this is once again w n n k all right. So, I will write w n n k and a separate multiplier w 2 n k n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. Okay. 
and what is this? We define this as g k okay, plus this is a multiplier w 2 n k and then h k. Okay, but now you see this k should vary actually I am going to determine k for all the 2 n points all right is not k should vary from 0 to 2 n whereas, I am having an n point d f t all right. So, after say uh, suppose n is 8. So, we are taking 16 point d f t s. So, after the first 8 9th, 10th etcetera should again be computed with some renumbering. So, I will write this as Okay, H K to be more precise, G K N. All right, plus H two N, sorry W two N K H K N. Okay, and K varying from. 0 k n minus 1. So, there are n number of k's all right. capital G 1 G 2 I cannot find from, from an 8 point sequence 16 points d f t. So, from 8 point, d, uh, 8 point sequence I can get an 8 point d f t with the help of 2 8 point d f t's I am going to generate a 16 point d f t. So, as you cross the 8th point the ninth point onward again these will be numbered, but that will be taken care the sign will be taken care of by this okay. that we will see in details how it works when we go to fast Fourier transform that is the faster al algorithm for DFTs. For the time being we are not going to discuss that we are going to dwell in <coughs> dwell on something else we will go to FFT later on. Now, we will take up linear convolution of two finite sequences with the help of d f t. Now, computation of d f t is much simpler all right. If you are having an n point sequence, then you can always get an n point d f t all right. Now, unlike the d t f t that is in the continuous domain of frequency, where you have infinite number of frequencies all right. So, here the computation will be restricted to only those many points. So, how do you get convolution of two sequences in the time domain say g n and h n two sequences of lengths say this one is of length n 1 this one is of length n 2. So, what will be the product length if I take g n convolution product is say y n. So, y n will be of length n 1 plus n 2 minus 1 okay. let us call it some m. All right. So, there is a very simple technique g n you extend you stretch it to some extended sequence g n which will be first n 1 points and then padded with zeros. So, that the length is <coughs> sorry say it is like g 1 g 0 g 1 g 2 etcetera g n minus n 1 minus 1 and then 0 0 0 up to m points total number of points is m all right. So, I will define this g e n as e equal to g n for 0 n m minus n 1 minus 1 okay. and equal to 0 for n m minus 1 
to n 1. Okay. Similarly, you stretch this h n to an equivalent a very similar kind of a sequence h e n of m points all right, by padding with zeros. Now, for g e n you can get d t f t or d f t. So, let g e k be the d f t corresponding to the similarly h e k be the d f t's of these m points. These are the two m point d f t's. Okay. Now, we know the property if there are two periodic sequences or two sequences of lengths identical lengths, if you take their products, if you take their products and then that is if you take the d f t s and then take the product, if you take the inverse we can get back the linear convolution provided they are padded with sufficient number of zeros. Otherwise, you have to go for circular convolution, is it not? Uh, so, here y k is g e k into h e k, all right. So, y n will be i d f t, take now the inverse of this g e k h e k. It is as simple as that. So, the procedure is like this. Now, all of you please try to develop a program, it is there also in the textbooks, some MATLAB programs to help you. So, follow these steps and then. So, g n, you go for 0 padding, you get g e n then write a dft program g e n padding up to m points okay so take m point dft similarly a h n pad with zero you get h e n and again you go for m point dft then take the product what you get is y k all right and then take the i d f t you'll get the sequence y n it's very simple now there's a very practical situation when you have a continuously flowing sequence of data that is an infinite sequence x n is coming all right and it is convolved with a filter of finite length h n okay this filter is having a finite length say n 1 all right how do you compute the d f t how do you find out say the convolution all right I want a convolution. That means, I am basically filtering the data, data sequence is x, x n, I am filtering it with the filter h n, all right. What will be the filter sequence? And that will also be a continuous sequence. Unlike the previous one where we had two fixed lengths, all right. Here it is a one is an infinite length, the other one is a fixed length, okay. How do you do that? Now, here you break up the input data into batches all right of some finite length let that be some n2 break up xn into batches of say n2 point sequences Okay. So, we define x n as summation 
there will be infinite number of batches x I put k here x k n minus k n 2. Okay. So, every n 2 set will be forming a set number a batch number x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on. Okay. Or in other words, I can write x k n is nothing but x n plus k n 2 for 0 n n 2 minus 1 okay, and 0 otherwise. So, it is like this suppose n 2 is equal to 6 we take an example and n 1 is equal to 4, n 2 is equal to 6 and n 1 is equal to 4. How does it look like? So, I will say take a sequence like this, say this is x 0, I will put x 0, okay, x I will write x 0, x 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and so on. These are the points x 2, x 3, I am not writing x everywhere, these are all the sequence points of x. So, 0 to 5, this will form the first batch, this is x 1 n. Then from 6 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 11, this will be x 2 n, index is always n, n varies from 0 to 6, 0 to 5, then from 12 onward up to 17, it will be x 3 n and so on. Okay. Uh, first one, sorry, thank you very much, this will be x 0, this one will be x 1, this one will be x 2 and so on. Okay. So, if I convolve, if I convolve with H n, there will be a spillover because H n is having a sequence length of 4. So, 4 plus 6, 10 minus 1, sequence length will be 9. That means, including 0, it will go up to 8. Okay. So, let us draw this a little more clearly, a little more clearly here. Uh, let me uh, draw it here. This is x n 0, let me mark it on this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and so on. 16, 17, 18 and so on. This is x n. So, I have broken it up up to this is x 1 n, x 0 n. Then from here to here x 2 n, then x 1 n, then x 2 n up to 17. Okay. <coughs> so, if I write y n sequence, <coughs> sorry, y 0, I write y i. So, this is y 0, <coughs> which will go up to sorry excuse me, up to this y 0 n, okay. where will y 1 start from? 6, y 1, where will it go up to? Included 13, yes. 
<coughs> length is 9, length is 9. So, 6 plus 9 it should be 14, is that so? 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, it should include 14. Okay. Again, the third one starts from 12. Okay. This is y 2 n goes up to 19, 20. Is it all right? Not 19? No. Check that all of them are having a length of 9. So, this is up to 8, 9 and then 8 to 15, 6 to 14 and then 12 to 20. Okay. So, I can write the output y n, now you can see y n will be equal to y 0 n for 0 n 5. Up to the first 6 points, it will be as it is y n is this much. Next, up to this point, it is y 0 n plus y 1 n equal to y 0 n plus y 1 n for 6 to n to 8. So, what is it in general? It is up to n 2 minus 1. This 5 corresponds to n 2 minus 1, the sequence length okay, of 6, is it not? Next one, what is this point? n 2. So, I will write the general version simultaneously and what is this? n 1 plus n 2 minus 2, is that so? Equal to next, it will be only y 1 n for some time, only y 1 n from this point to this point, all right, from 9 to 12. So, 9 to 11. Sure. So, what should be this? n 1 plus n 2 minus 1. This was ending at minus 2. So, it should be again from minus 1 to how much is this? This is 2 into n 2 minus 1. So, you can write this sequence again next it will be y 1 n plus y 2 n. Okay. Now, you can fill it up, you can write keep on writing like this. So, here this is add and save that is you take the 6 point there are 6 points. So, you have extended it up to so many points 9 points and you have also taken for h n the 4 points. So, 6 plus 4 minus 1. So, 9 point length you have got the d f t s you have computed for this 9 point sequences then take the product then take the i d f t you get a 9 point sequence. Out of that 9 point sequence you first consider only the first 6 that is n 2 minus 1 points rest of it you save, all right. 6, 7, 8, these 3 points you save, then you com compute for the second batch, again go by the same process that is pad it with zeros and then take the DFTs, 2 finite sequence lengths just now we have discussed, you pad with zeros, make them of equal length 9 and then take the DFTs, take the product, take the IDFT. Again, you get a 9 point sequence out of which the first 3 will have to be added with the previously saved value. All right. So, you add and save. So, this these 3 points you add, rest of it you save, again go for the third batch and so on, keep on doing it. 
all right. So, you get the output sequence, all right. There is another method. So, I will take it up later on if we get time because there are many more important topics you can read up from the book otherwise. Let us take some very typical examples for considering the DFTs. Just now we have seen okay, example 1. We are given a sequence x n say 2, 1, minus 1, 0, 3, 2, 0, minus 3, 4. This is the origin. We are asked to calculate the value of say this integral d x e to the power j omega by d omega squared d omega. So, how much is this? <coughs> now, we know x is equal to sigma x n e to the power minus j omega n. So, if you take its derivative, what do you get? n x n n x n e to the power minus j omega n anything else minus j will be there if I take its magnitude okay. So, basically is it not the Fourier transform of n x n magnitude Yes, when I take the magnitude, then it gets only this part. So, this will vanish and j also will go. Okay. So, I strike it off. There was a j term, so j will also go. This is the magnitude. Basically, it is a Fourier transform of this with a j term. So, So, how much is d x by d omega this square d omega minus pi to plus pi you remember Percival's theorem we discussed last time the energy con this represents basically energy content of the signal n x n in the frequency domain it is this and in the time domain it will be this n x n squared. Okay. So, if you compute this, this is 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. So, minus 3 into 2 squared, so minus 6 squared. So, that becomes, is it all right? Is 2 pi into n x n squared. So, this is 1, 2, 3. So, 6 squared it is n into x n whole thing squared mind you plus 1 into 2. So, 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 plus 3 squared plus 2 into 2 into 2 4 squared plus 0 plus how much is this 2 3 4 4 into 3 12 squared plus 5 into 4 20 squared whatever be that value so that will be the value of this okay let us take up another example is this clear we are just simply applying percival theorem suppose this is a periodic sequence x1 n which is given as sin n pi by 4. Okay. All right. For a periodic sequence, what you get is a periodic transform, we call it discrete Fourier series. 
okay. the relationship is exactly identical that is if you have a uh, I think I discussed it earlier if you have a periodic function say in the time domain correspondingly in the frequency domain you get lines all right corresponding to this frequency 1 by t corresponding frequency is 1 by t so say f0 so it will be at f0 twice f0 and so on as you have got in fourier series this is f0 omega magnitude if you are having a discrete function okay if you are having a, a periodic signal if you are having an aperiodic signal here you get f j omega a continuous function you can write either in terms of frequency or radian frequency okay you will get instead of lines you will get a continuous function whatever be that shape now if you discretize this if you have a discrete function in the time domain like this if it is of say finite length or even if it is infinite length if it is converging then in the frequency domain you get <coughs> periodic functions. So, if one is discrete in one domain then the in the other domain it is periodic this is what we have seen if it is discrete in the frequency domain in the time domain it is periodic in case of d t f t this is x n it is like this. Now, next comes if you are having a periodic function in the time domain periodic as well as discrete okay. let it be like this. like this suppose this is x n I show it by x tilde n that is a periodic function. Then in the this frequency domain again this will be periodic all right because it is discrete it has to be periodic because it is periodic then it has to be discrete. So, this will also be discrete and periodic. Okay. So, here it may be say like this I do not know the exact nature how it will vary, but it also may be like this and so on. Okay. So, if this is discrete and periodic then this will also be discrete and periodic. Okay. In one period in one period if there are n points in the time domain then this time length is n into t is it not t is the sampling time. So, n number of points are covered say in one period whatever be that period. Okay. So, n t is the total time. So, what is the corresponding frequency here base frequency will be this f 0 will correspond to 1 by n t. Okay. And what is this frequency this is the sampling time T s if I call it. So, what is the periodicity here corresponding to 1 by T s all right. So, this was n T s and this is 1 by T s. So, what is the ratio n all right that means there will be in the frequency domain this is 0 to 2 pi between 0 and 2 pi there will be exactly n number of points accommodated and they will be again at regular intervals because if you remember the harmonics will come at regular intervals of f naught is it not. So, here also the distance is the same frequency f naught that is the 
corresponding to the sampling frequency. So, sampling frequency will be the base and it will be n multiples of sampling frequency which will form 2 pi. So, the sampling frequency is again 2 pi by n. So, an n point sequence of a periodic function will be represented by n point sequence again a periodic function in the frequency domain. Okay. And these n points we find are exactly those points as we have seen in the case of DFT. That means, for describing any discrete system of finite length say if there are 100 points, I need only I need not have the entire uh, spectrum from minus infinity to plus infinity, I can select only those 100 points between a uh, span of 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So, these points are 2 pi at an interval of 2 pi by n and here also I find it is same as 2 pi by n and the relationship is exactly identical. So, from the periodic Fourier transform which we call it DFS discrete Fourier series basically you just remove the hat it becomes a DFT of n point finite sequence which covers one period of the periodic function. Is that all right? So, for a periodic function x tilde n some people write x p n to be to give more stress on the periodicity. So, for a periodic function if I take just one period and take that a periodic sequence a finite length sequence the corresponding DFT will be exactly same as x tilde k for one period. Okay. Now, in our case in this example x 1 n is say is one such period of a periodic function sin n pi by 4. So, how many points are there? How many point sequence is it? n pi by 4? No, uh, now we are taking just one period of the periodic sequence. So, what is that one period covering? How many period uh, time, uh, how many uh, sequence points are there? 8 pi by 4 is the basic uh, uh, unit. So, there are basically 8 points. You can write those 8 points, what will be the DFTs? So, n is equal to 0 is sin 0, n is equal to 1 is sin pi by 4, 1 by root 2, okay. then 1, then again 1 by root 2, then 0, then minus 1 by root 2, minus 1, minus 1 by root 2 and 0. Okay. These are the 8 points. This is 2 pi. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Got it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no, that is 7. Ah. Including 0, there are 8 points. So, what will be x k? Could someone tell me what would be x 0, x 1? What would be the values? One way of doing it is compute it. Do you need to compute this? Okay, x 0 is how much? You can see its average value is 0. Is not x 0 corresponds to basically sum of this. So, that is equal to 0. Okay. Now, could someone tell me what would be x 1, what would be x 2 without computing? Can somebody guess without computing? Okay. Before we go to this problem, this is a periodic function. All right. Can you write the Fourier series for this? Fourier series, can you show the Fourier spectrum? All of you please try, what will be the Fourier, sp Fourier spectrum of this? Suppose this is corresponding to uh, 50 hertz in the time domain, uh, sorry 0 2, 0 1, 0 4 and so on, 0 this is f t. So, f t is equal to say this magnitude is 10, then what is it? What is this? 10 sin 314 t. 
corresponding to 50 hertz 2 pi ft ok. So, what are the what will be the frequency spectrum? Frequency spectrum no DC value only at 50 hertz there is a spike that is all ok. If you take the complex frequency spectrum it will be plus 50 and minus 50 j is it not? If you take complex Fourier series. So, for a pure sinusoid there is only one frequency is not. So, if the periodic uh, sequence happens to be a part of only a single frequency then what are the elements that will be present? So, this will be 0, this will be 0 except x 1 only the first harmonic you call it first harmonic or fundamental only that will be present is it not. So, this will be finite others are all 0 will that be all right. What about this corresponding to this? So, what are the properties of DFT? There is a symmetry from the other end. So, there will be another frequency corresponding to x 7. There are 8 points I write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all right. You wrap it 0 is the center all right. So, this is 1 this one will be 7. So, 1 and 7 will be identical a complex conjugate all right. Then 2 and 6, 3 and 5 and 4 will be exactly opposite to that x 0 is a real quantity 4 will also be a real quantity. In an 8 point sequence x 4 will also be always real that you can see for a real sequence for a real sequence why because w n 4 is either minus 1 and if you take its power it will be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. So, basically the sequence points will be added either with plus 1 signs or minus 1 signs alternately there will be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and add them together that will be always real. So, x 0 and x 4 both will be real ok and in this case only x 1 and x 7 will be present. Now, you can compute those ok. So, if you are given sequences like this by inspection if you can back out there is only one frequency existing here then you can write down which frequency it is. For example, if I give you a sequence if I give you a sequence of say uh, 0 1 1 0 ok 0 1 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 0 apparently it is difficult to make out what it is. Hmm? Okay, you try this at home, take it as an exercise. What are the components? X case, suppose x n is this 8 point sequence, what will be x n? Sorry, I uh, forgot to put minus signs. Sorry, minus signs and 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Again, another sequence this is x 1 n, this is x 2 n. Okay. Then 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 and 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 0 plus 1 0 plus 1. Take this is x 3 this is x 4 these are the 4 sequences you try to find out the DFTs of these 4 sequences. There is a symmetry, some type of symmetry from where you can find out what are the harmonics and again I mean from there you can compute the corresponding harmonics. Okay. Next suppose we will take up another example if sigma delta omega plus 2 pi k what will be x n? It is a very typical type of function. What is this? 
for all the values of k so, 0 to or minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, basically it is a periodic function at intervals of 2 pi. This is in omega. You are given this is magnitude 1. All right. <coughs> what will be x n? Now, how do you compute x n? x n is 1 by 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi you cover x e to the power j omega e to the power j omega and d omega from minus pi to plus pi. Okay. So, in one period this is coming only once How much is it? Will be one. It is by j omega n. Does it become one? Let's see. What does it mean? <coughs> X n is also a sequence like this. check up whether the factor 2 pi comes or it gets cancelled. I uh, Now, what is x uh, sorry not 1 it is 1 into this I should put just delta <coughs> omega over 1 period which is existing only at this point all right which is existing only at this point. It is 0 here. So, how much is it? Integrate and then find out. How do you get the integration of f t delta t say minus any a to b? How much is this? Hmm? Huh? Could someone tell me? If I multiply a function by delta function, what is it? It is the magnitude of that function at t equal to 0, because delta t exists only at t equal to 0. It is a window through which you are trying to see a function and you can see only at delta t means at t equal to 0, it is multiplied by an impulse. So, it is magnitude of the impulse of strength f naught because it is visible only at t equal to 0. So, it will be f naught is it not precisely that is what we have done here. So, it will be value of this function by which you are multiplying this at omega equal to 0. So, that is equal to 1 1 and 1 integrated from minus pi to plus pi that will be 2 pi. So, 2 pi will get cancelled. So, it is just 1. So, it is x n is a sequence of 1s. Is that all right? <coughs> now we come to state equations. Which one? This one? This integration you mean? After this F t into No, of obviously in this case it was minus pi to plus pi and that was getting cancelled. Okay, f naught into b plus a. 
okay fine is that all right uh, what i wanted to stress on is except for the limit basically what you are indicating is 1 into dt and then put the limit say t1 to t2 so it will be t2 minus t1 all right it amounts to that of course f0 i will call it f0 f0 is a constant you can take it out so now we'll take up state equation suppose we are given a system whose transfer function is we are once again going back to z domain representation yz by xz okay is equal to b0 plus b1 z inverse etc plus bm z to the power minus m divided by 1 plus a1 z inverse and so on plus a n z to the power minus n <coughs> sorry excuse me. So, one may write this in the discrete domain as b 0 I multiply by x cross multiplication and then transfer the delayed quantities of the output y on this side. So, I get b 0 x n plus b 1 x n minus 1 and so on plus b m x n minus m minus because these are plus. So, transferring on this side it will become minus a 1 y n minus 1 and so on minus a n y n minus capital N okay, which means now this is the equation it is a general ARMA model we discussed about ARMA model is it not general auto regressive and mov moving average. So, it is like this <coughs> one may take x n or in the z domain I can write x z and in the time domain it is b n or in the z domain it is b z here you get w n I can I can write w n which is convolution of b n with x n or w z one may write which means x z into b z in the z domain it will be multiplied in the time domain it will be convolved. Okay. I can segregate these two operations of a z by b z or b z by a z as b z multiplied by 1 by a z. Okay. So, this can be written as a z and correspondingly it is a n in the time domain and it should be 1 by a z. Suppose correspondingly it is some coefficients of a n. So, on this side you will get y n or y z you can call it. One might as well reverse the order of these two hypothetical filters. I can conceive them as two different filters put together in cascade which is giving me b z by a z all right. So, I might as well interchange their positions and one may write obviously, the intermediate output will be different once again the same input. So, I will write a z 1 by a z here and I get say v n as the output and b z here and then y z is the corresponding output or y n. Okay. So, how do we write y n? Okay. One may write v n, let us see the second one. All right. v n is equal to x n 
if you write this 1 by az if you expand all right so xn minus a1 times v n minus 1 minus a2 times v n minus 2 and so on there is nothing like a0 because in the denominator we have already normalized with a coefficient 1 that has been incorporated in the numerator okay so minus a n v n minus n okay then yz or yn you may write in terms of vn okay it will be b0 into v1n v0n v0n plus b1 into v1 okay basically it is v v n minus 1 and so on okay uh, b m v n minus m okay uh, we will write s 1 n we choose some variables s 1 n as v n minus n s 2 n as v one step earlier n minus n plus 1 and so on s n n as v n minus 1 we start from the other end this is s 1 n this is s 2 n and so on okay s 3 n s 4 n like that and end up here as s n n okay let us define up to this. If I add one step with this, that means if I go to the future, if I go to the future, so S1 n plus 1 will be V n minus n plus 1, which is same as S2 n. So, in state space, in control systems and networks, you have seen. I can write x1 dot is equal to x2, x2 dot is equal to x3 and so on. I can define the derivatives of each state in terms of the other state. All right. So, exactly similar operations we will take up. So, we will take it up in the next class, we will complete this in the next class. Thank you very much.